As I mentioned, we have four items on the agenda tonight. I'll, I'll start uh, by introducing the board. Uh, uh, on my left over here is Fred Keen, uh, Terry Tisak, Kyron Elias, I'm Randy Bogart. Our recording secretary is Dory Shaw, John Manchos, and Lenora Mirad. Our uh, college enforcement officer is with us tonight, Joe Booth. Town attorney Herb Cully is here. And uh, from the town board, uh, Dave Reynolds is with us as well. Uh, as I mentioned, we have, uh, and Karen Stanislaw is in the parking lot, so she'll be in in one minute. Uh, as I mentioned, we have four items on the agenda tonight. And uh, I'll have Dory read the application. Uh, and each person can come up to the table here. Bring with you anything that you think is pertinent to your particular application, whether it's letters of support, pictures, diagrams, anything that you think is going to make your case. At that point, the board will probably have some questions. Uh, of you, and then we'll open it up. Uh, the audience may have some questions on a particular application, and what I would ask is that uh, you direct any questions rather than to each other to the board. Okay, welcome, and, and Karen is with us. Um, so, with that said, I'll have Dora read the first application. Okay. The application is Mr. Frank Cristiano for property located at 3899 Oneida Street, Washington Mills, which is Tony's Pizza. Mr. Cristiano is seeking a quantity area variance for 39 parking spaces. He is expanding his building by 870 plus or minus square feet. The site is already 39 parking spaces deficient. Welcome. How are you doing? Good, how are you doing? Not too bad. I guess I'm coming with one problem, but maybe you can solve another one for me. I wanted to, uh, I have that 800 square feet of uh, outdoor patio space that really doesn't earn me any money, so I wanted to turn it into uh, something that I could uh, produce a revenue from. So I came up with the idea of uh, creating a 24 seat barbecue uh, addition onto the store that I have in Washington Mills. Uh, that's what I went to Mr. Booth just to find out the idea of uh, you know being short parking numbers, and then he said, well, apply for the meeting here. I guess uh, in my recent vacation to Charleston, South Carolina, I've changed the idea of what I'd like to do. I still have to enclose that patio area uh, and you know, attach it to the rest of the building and open it up and uh, create a gourmet candy shop. Reason being, as I take my mind, is uh, cost of labor and uh, chocolate doesn't spoil. <laughs> it's not for me. That's, that's the thing. So, and I have a, I have a multitude of uh, families that come in, sporting uh, teams that come in, so the whole time with, uh, with a uh, pizza and cake candy party seems a little bit more logical. At least me right now. So I don't need any seats. I want to open it up. I thought this was a thing. No, no, I'm going to ask the chair the question as soon as you're finished. Oh, okay. But I don't need, a, I guess, a, a variance for parking because I don't need to add on any tables in there to create more parking spaces with seats needed. But I was coming in here to see if there was a, a possibility of changing the, uh, the zoning for, for the parking designation to maybe a, a shopping center designation. And the reason being, I, I could put that out there, is that the parking is so rotational, I'm never full. The only time I've been full there uh, in the last, I don't know how long we've been there, 15 years, is uh, when the Ride for Missing Children, when uh, Valentino's was a sponsor, and they would hold their meetings there. That was an understandable situation, but I've never really been to full capacity. The other tenants are six tenants there. They're all on rotational time frames. Most of them are done by 4 o'clock. I have a hair salon that's by appointment. I have a bakery in back cell, first bakery, that by 2 p.m. they're done as well. Valentino's is a once every week or two week function place, so I'm the only person that's open there. No, so it's 24 7, but 80 until, until midnight. So, does the designation change to uh, shopping center would uh, increase my spaces, and I would, I would have an abundance of almost 40 spaces. The parking requirements for the shopping center are much more lenient the way his parking has been calculated. He never got approved as a shopping center. Oh, he meets the criteria of the shopping center. He's over 10,000 square feet. He's got multi-use tenants there. And he actually included two tenants that aren't on the same parcel. Your bakery and your beauty salon are not on the same parcel, Correct. so they wouldn't come into play. But the other tenants are. If he can be granted um, the shopping center designation, his parking would be more in, more in line with the current. Well, what's, what's it called now, Joe? 
It's, it's not. It's individual. It was assessed individually. It was assessed as a bank, a facility, a restaurant, an office, and each one of those spaces go off to the gross floor area, which jacks up the parking requirements. So there are multiple uses on the one parcel? Correct. When he got his site plan, what did he get approved as? Just the, what you see, a restaurant, two restaurants, uh, office space, all individually. They never called it a shopping center or designated it as such because when they thought shopping center, they thought New Hartford Shopping Center, they thought uh, saying the town mall or whatever. But technically, it doesn't mean the requirements of shopping center. A small shopping center. A small shopping center. It's C2. It is. So it's a permitted yeah. use. Uh, I have a question, uh, yeah. Attorney, if I may. With the public notice uh, that you put out, uh, there was certainly not inquiry about an outdoor patio or pizza shop. But we're changing here midstream. Does that violate any type of... Well, he's not asking you for a variance. He's permitted to put the candy shop in. Right. Because he's not having the restaurant with the tables. That's why he needed the variance on the parking. So he doesn't need the variance. He's just asking the question of how he would be converted to a shopping center. And I think it's probably an amendment to site plan. Yeah. With the plan. I, mean, I think it's a one meeting deal. Well, I guess that's my bottom line. Yeah. Of There's no, he's not asking you for anything. Right. But well, what do we consider here? Nothing. He's, he's, he doesn't need it. <laughs> so you're just talking about so property in the, down in the back, not along yeah. the yeah. 9th Street. Yeah. Correct. Home is this. No, it's just, that's, it's just the pizzeria in the back. It's just the one off the road. Tony's and, and the... Correct. Uh, as soon as you drive in and yeah, you see, the, see the Tony uh, sign, yeah. I have a two two decks, one, uh, one on the left, one on the right, yeah. and on the right is the one I'm looking at the close. On the right. Okay, yeah. but then there's a building to the right. It's separated from Tony's. Correct. That's separate buildings. That there are two security there. company. Yep. And Same as yeah. utility corp. Yeah, but you're not talking about any of that. No. Yeah. no. Okay. All right. I understand. I, I think Joe makes a good point. Is that we have to go to, to the planning board. Planning board meeting. So set that up. And, sure. And, and set that up for them and, and get approval from them. No problem. I was coming in. Figured myself. Can I got you off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Listen, I told you, vacation yeah. does things to the mind. So <laughs> appreciate. Me to take up your time. Appreciate. You mean that. Uh, Candy shop is Candy shop. the thing to do. That, that's the well. It's it seems. I, I don't need more pizza in there. I don't need yeah. more. But I think what can I put in there that'll actually sell the track and chocolate okay. pastries, cakes, chocolate desserts, candies. Okay. So now I can tie it in with, with people that are actually coming in. So I'll make it visible and close it and have a little more space. Okay. Is it an individual business? Uh, no, it'll be tied in, so they'll, they'll be able to see it from the inside of the building as oh, they walk okay. into the counter. They'll look to the right, hopefully, and they'll see something. If not, I'll stick it right in front of the face as they walk in. Mm -hmm. So, well, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank, you. Good. Good. thank you. Bye. Take care. Thank you. Okay, we're going to change the agenda up a little bit. We're going to take the application of Mrs. Barbara Responti, 8121 Seneca Turnpike, Club, New York. It's the town of New Hartford. Corner of Seneca Turnpike and Homestead Road. The applicant wishes to install a garage 30 feet plus or minus past the front of her home or garage side 21 feet plus or minus from the front property line. The front yard setback is 57 feet plus or minus from Homestead Road West. <coughs> the applicant is seeking a 30 foot plus or minus front yard area variance. Welcome. Thank you. Which I think some of you have. Pictures. I think I got an aerial view there yeah. and a sketch. I don't think I have enough. Mm -hmm. Is it just pass this I'll around? Or? Down and I'm sure, she does have enough. I got one on the file, so hopefully, yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. That's good. Yeah. 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 It's not going to be attached? No, it's not. It's going to be a detached garage. As you can see, right now, if you look at the aerial view with the, the cars, yeah. it, it, that's very unsightly. I'd rather have them in the garage or where they can be stored. 
right now in the winter, we we'll put them up, we we'll put them up for storage. In the summer, it's how it looks in the summer. What are we looking at here? What is this? That is uh, the garage I like to put up. Is it three stall? It's actually four. It's one on each end, and that is a double in the middle. Oh, okay, the double in the middle. Okay. Which one was put in here? Yeah, where I, where is it that you want to put it? I'm not sure if you're in, the back in your paperwork. It, there is a little survey. I'm not sure if it's in there. There you go. The yeah, survey, it's, it'll say right there. Proposed. Mm -hmm. Proposed. Yeah. So it's going to be 44 feet wide by 24 feet mm -hmm. depth. Yes. Can yeah. you, I guess, can you just, I, I see this picture here, so I just make sure I understand where, there's the pool, but could, could you come over and just point it out or, or take a pencil? Yeah. Would you just draw it where, about where you want it? Could you draw it? Yeah, it's right there. 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 No, but I, I want to see it on the overhead. Oh, okay. oh, on the overhead. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Here it is, yeah. Okay, so it would be. You don't have to be perfect. Right in here. And where are you going to put the driveway to get to it? Well, right now... It looks like it'll be facing this way. I'm right, assuming. it'll be facing this way. And what we're putting in here are cars that will not even move in winter. Right. We're using it basically for storage, for lawn and for patio equipment also. Yeah, so will you drive and in here? Probably over here. I have a shed right here. Yeah, I kind of saw that. I'm going to remove that. I'm taking that down. And I was thinking just a very narrow, just enough for a car, just to kind of, because I don't want to disturb the rest of the lawn. So I want to kind of just keep it to the side and just come up. Gotcha. And I don't know if you can tell, all my property is surrounded. By trees. By trees. Yeah, that doesn't help me as much as something. Okay. And there is a fence. Back. How many cars do you think you'll be able to get in there? You want to said you want to put pool supplies and stuff in there. Well, I was too, thinking right? three, three stalls <coughs> for the for cars. cars and one for so three pool stalls equipment. Of, three stalls would be. You're not going to double up the cars, are you? Just three, three cars. Right. And, um, there's the, the garage in the middle. Yeah. Two cars. Okay. Oh, and then the one, one on the, one on the street three. side. For the other car, and then the one on the other side for the pool stuff. Exactly. Gotcha. I noticed there's like several cars in this aerial yes. picture. Yes. Uh, are they all family owned, or yes. is there a business going on there? No, or no, it's not a business. <laughs> in fact, the garage, there wouldn't be any repairing, it's yeah. just storage. Uh, yeah, this, the family cars. My husband and son like their cars. And there's a couple of really nice cars in there, too. <laughs> yeah. We love those cars. Really nice cars. Right? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was there today also, and I'm just, I was concerned about the entrance to that, too. So basically, you are going to come in through this area. Oh, yeah, we'd come in through this area. Right. The same way, and we can't see what you're... I'm sorry. Here. Right in through here. I, yes, this she, is but she put the line on, the, with, well, I put the line, but she... Okay. There's a but pool there. Yeah. Yes, right. I can't, that's why I can't yeah, put right. a garage in the back of the house because right. of the... Is, the it, is there anybody that's here on this particular application? Okay. I, I've got a question. Today, I mean, you've been yeah. without the garage all this time. Mm -hmm. What has changed? <laughs> to install a four-stall garage. The number of cars. So the number of cars have changed. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's why. I mean, are these vintage cars, or are they? Yes, uh, three of them are uh, classic cars. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then the two we keep in our house garage, those are very new, but they're also just car juniors in the summer. So up until this point, you've stored them someplace? Yes, the past few years we stored them in the winter, and then in the summer, they, that looks like that. And it'll be a low profile, so I wanted to blend in the rest of the You won't be doing any body work or mechanical work, are you just going to use it for no. storage? Right. Yeah. The, 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 uh... 
Okay, it looks like the garage you're going to carry the same uh, uh, diamond siding, same colors and that. Yep. The roof. The yard looks very nice. By the way. Thank you. Everything's very well. The tulips, the whole thing. Oh, you see? I think. Yeah. I the snoop, how was the snoop that you called oh. the cops on? <laughs> <laughs> last week or this week? No, last Monday or this Monday? This Monday. Oh, no, so I was on last Monday. I was on this one. Hey. The deer had a field, field day on some of my trees yeah, this year. I, I you too. You too. I, I, I think I understand it now. Thank you for drawing the picture. Any other questions for the applicant? No, no, I think it's. Uh, uh, I asked my question. Fred? Okay. Karen? I'm okay. All right. Okay. Jan? Yeah. I'm looking at there's I'll tell you what, you can probably get a fire truck all around here or something right here. And everything's so well hidden you have to stop and get out of your car and walk around. I, I do have another question, Mr. Chairman. I'm looking at the property here and I gotta ask this question just for the record. Is there an, any other way that you can install what your needs are? on your large piece of property without infringing on any of the variants? Um, large piece of property, whereabouts? I don't know. Well, I'm talking about your piece of property. Is there any other location that you can take that and place it without infringing on the town zone? I don't see any. In fact, I kept trying to keep it as close off of this road here as I could by right. putting it here. I can't do anything really in the front. Well, how far on the other side are, from where the pool is to the to the line over on that side? Uh, I wouldn't feet, be maybe? able to really yeah, get in the turn. back. This is your front of the house, am I correct? Yes. That's the way I saw. I was in here this morning, probably early this morning, about eleven o'clock. So. I was just trying to get an overview. I didn't get out of the car. But I just wanted to make sure that I was at the right house. Mm -hmm. But it looks like you do have a lot of property there. What's the size of your lot? Uh, you probably can see it on the map. Eleven by. I, I just kept trying to calculate. Three acres. No, no, no. Wait a minute. Um, she's got. Uh, oh, it's no. no. a half acre. Half acre. Oh, half acre. Yeah. Um, I think that's bigger than half acre. That's a nice piece of property. I definitely would say that's about That's why I was trying to get an idea of the land mass with the pool and the house and the trees. By the way, the, the, you guys are surrounded It's 150 in the back. Yeah. Um, 91 on the front. 91 on the front. 196 okay. and 161. Well, I, I had asked the question if there was something. This is the corner lot. It's positive problem. Yeah, you've got two corners. The corner on the front, the corner on the front. I don't have any more questions. I'm not going to you. Okay. No, I'm, I'm, they're not going to fix cars there, so I'm going to become a body shop or a mechanical device, basically for storage. Okay. We'll open this up. Is there anybody in the audience that wishes to speak on behalf of this particular application? No. Okay. Um, we did get a call. Oh. And then, uh, we did get a uh, New York State DOT, uh, no issue, and Oneida County Department of Planning with no recommendations. Okay, we'll close. Comments? Fred? I don't, I don't have a problem with it. it. It fits in the area. I don't think it's going to be that big an issue. Here. You want comments or you want yeah, thoughts? Just, yeah. I just think the application thing. is too large with a four stall garage to be put on for that piece of property. And I don't really see a hardship there. Uh, my, one of my questions what what has changed? And obviously, if we did store cars, now we're not storing cars. Uh, my personal opinion at this point, and I'll just hold back until we vote. But okay. I just, I'm looking at the landmass compared to the house, the pool, and the force mm -hmm. ball grass. Force ball grass. I, I, I uh, kind of agree with Terry on this one. I hate to say it, but I, it's just a large, for, it's about three quarters or a little less of an acre, but it, it is quite a, it's quite a structure to put in there, in that back corner. 
Yeah, I've been sort of in a situation that you're in right now. When you've got a couple of classic cars, if you store them somewhere else, and you want to go out for a ride or something, it's, it's, it gets to be a real hassle. And if you got the the room, and I was fortunate enough to have the room, I just put another had another garage on the side of my house. But uh, because I know how people are, I know the vehicle like that. I don't think they're ever going to see jump around there or anything. And the way that's built and with the trees around it, you can almost ride by it, probably not even know it's there. I'm not saying I agree. You know, uh, because maybe. She goes stall in front, stall in back, make it just two stalls wide, and you know, make it four bays, but one behind the other. I, I really, and like I say, I'm partial to something like this, so, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm looking at it like, you know, if it was, <clears throat> this is so well screened, you never even know it's there. That's the best. And there's nobody, the and there's nobody in the area, anyways, that is, is here in this room that is totally against it. It's not going to be a junk here. I mean, just take a look at the crop being out. No, I, I agree. Probably, 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 in this particular one, I don't have a problem. No, I don't have a problem. I mean, we could ask, does it need to be four stall? Could it go down? To, could it be made smaller? But I don't believe that they're infringing on anything that's going to be substantial to anyone else, and she's trying to make her property, you know, conducive to what they're using it for. And when any one of us buys a piece of property, I think we would like to no. be able to do that as long as you're within. And it is. It's so concealed that. I don't see where it would be a problem. And the shed on the property will be coming down. On the corner, oh. I don't know if you've seen that. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All the sheds on the I agree. I agree with Lenora and, uh, and uh, John. I, um, because it's so, it's so sheltered. You know, it's so it's it, it's its own, just a own little world in there. And um, I I don't feel that it, uh, it presents any problem. Uh, to anyone in the neighborhood, I don't even think you'll see it really. Okay. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm, concerned, I'm concerned. I'm concerned with the size, and I and I it's looked at, and when I saw it, I said, "Wow, that, that's an awful big. That, that's an awful big. It's 24 by 44. That's an and four stalls. So it's awful big. So I'm very concerned about that. I hear what you're saying, where it's going to be, and it's kind of out of sight because you have the the, the trees along the road there, but. I'm still concerned about the side, the size of it, and uh, you know, yeah. uh, concerned about as we as we go forward here. Is this, you know, the next one that comes? Are you going to say, oh, well, okay, we're going to put up the 24 by 44 also, so we should go ahead and approve that one too? And I know we take each one individually and consider all the facts on that. I understand that, but uh, I'm just concerned on the size on this one. So I think that we should take a look at, at the... Uh, Can I make one more comment? Absolutely. If, when you pull up there at first, if you looked in the driveway... You thought it was there. That's exactly what I was going to say. I, I so, thought so it was I. built without a permit. And I was going to say, uh-oh. Well, <laughs> no, when you pull up in front and look down their driveway, looking at <clears> this picture, it almost looks like it, it was on the garage that's already there. Oh, that's right. And I sat there looking and I said, no, it can't be. And then I went around the corner and started looking around, saw the pool and stuff, and I said, you know what? You could ride back here all day long and not see this thing. That's my only concern with the trees is if something happens to them and they get cut down, then they're going to have a pretty big, uh, they're going to have a pretty big block. Uh, well, we already, we already had some trees that we took down and we replaced. Yeah. yeah. There's no doubt that it's going to be very nice and very well done. It's just... It's a, it's a pretty big structure. I'm willing, if I can, even if I had to bring it in a little bit, maybe three stall. I'm willing to do that. But well, I'd feel much more comfortable with three stalls, if that's what you're saying. What's that? I would definitely feel much more comfortable with three stalls for me. <clears throat> 
Well, it's it's not going to be that much different, but if you look, it looks pretty well, good, except for the... Right. Well, I do, I do want to address your comment yeah. with the trees, though. Mm -hmm. That is any property in New Hartford that has the trees that anyone, the deers, would ever take down, any homeowner would be at that, at the mercy of those trees coming down. And there's a lot of property that you might not want to look into if those if trees come down. <laughs> well, that's a good point. Yeah. That's true. So let's take a look at the criteria. Whether well, the benefit can be achieved by other means feasible to the applicant. I would say yes. Because you could get stuff. What they've done in the past is the story has been off site. Oh, just in the um, winter. Oh, I understand. Just in the winter. Yeah, that's the part I was talking about. Mm -hmm. that's, but it's it a hardship, as you're saying. They have to go drive someplace else to get the car. Leave my car, stuff. leave my car there, and swap stuff around, you know. I hear you. How does that ever change the neighborhood character of the nearby properties? No. Whether the request is substantial? To me, it is. I think that it is. It's, it's, it's a big, it's a poor stall the uh, The uh, well, what her request is, she's putting in a poor stall branch, but what her request of what she needs. Yeah. It's still substantial size wise. Is there saying more? Her, her, the request for the variance, for the footage of the variance, is that substantial? Or are you saying the garage is substantial? The size. I, I think the size is substantial. No, I think Laura's got a point. Yeah. Because it's nine feet at the, this corner, yeah. so what's the, what, what are we looking for? It's supposed you to be look, 10. Yeah. What's that, a one foot? And on the front here, it's 30. That's what I'm saying. I mean, the the variance is. Yeah, right. I, I think you're right. She hit it right on the head. So you're saying the garage is... It could be 80 square feet. It could be, we're not talking about the size of the oh structure she's putting on. We're talking about the size of the barrier yeah, she's yeah. requesting. Yeah. So let me ask a question, Joe. I don't know if you ran the numbers as far as uh, uh, square footage. How much is, is on the property now? And how much this would add to it? Well, 25 percent, isn't that... Oh, I don't think they're going to close. 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 Okay, we're looking. I, I, I changed what I said based on what uh, you're right. I'm, I, uh, I still think it's a big garage, but I. It is a big garage. But, but what I was what looking at was wrong. It's a big garage. It's on a big piece of property, it's but right. we're thinking about. On the yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Good for yeah. the size. It creates the variance problem. Well, if she said it backfired her. Well, that's why I asked. If, the if pool, there was wait, another location. Well, the pool's in a way of doing that. Right. Uh, I don't go around the backside. It's a it's a, I know. It, it, if it wasn't a corner lot, she wouldn't even be here. Mm -hmm. She'd be putting it in her backyard, basically. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Well, that's what I'm saying. And, and you know what? Nobody in the neighborhood is, is here complaining against it. There's no one that's affecting anybody. Yeah. yeah. What's that? I didn't get one call. I changed my mind. I don't think it's a big. You still going to the big What I've done yet? I was, I was on, yes. You still going down the question. Uh, right. so I've kind of changed my mind. Was it possible to have this still from my mom of I don't think so. No, I don't. I didn't say no to that. <laughs> well, they let's just talk to yourself, Yes. Yeah. 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 Not a problem with self creation. Well, that said, let's go on and make the motion. I'll make the motion we met. If I grant the variance, it's Second? Second. Aye. 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 We're all set. Yeah. I see Joe before, I you see very Joe before uh, you start to get a building permit. Oh, yes. Okay? Good luck. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much for your if we go up, do we get a test ride one of the cars? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be a little late. It'll be a rush. Now, wait a minute. It'll be a rush. He's a baker. 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 He's a ba
Okay, the Thank application you. of Thank BB you. Supply Corporation, 4676 Commercial Drive, New Hartford. The applicant is applying for use variance to install a large scale, more than 10 kilowatt solar system. Schedule B permitted uses does not allow for large scale solar system. Welcome. <laughs> Hello. That was a good discussion about the last one. It was. I forgot that you said it was really good. That's why we got around the board. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? My name is Mark Vulai. I'm the CFO at VP Supply Corp. This is Jay Ditus and Steve Riggle. They also work for VP Supply. These guys are the experts in solar. And my most uh, my objective was to facilitate the filing of the use variance and you know provide the information that was requested on the documentation. Okay. And thank you for taking the time to, to see us today. We do appreciate it. So, um, so who are you, gentlemen? My name is Jay Ditus, and I work at VP Supply in the Renewable Energy Division. Jay, and I'm Steve Rickell. And, and you're the same. Yeah. Okay. Do you have cards, gentlemen? I do, actually. Both of you. Who's your leg? Let's come see me. What's your name? Oh, yeah, no, I, I just had surgery, um, and uh, I had to have my ACL replaced. Oh, thank you, thank you. Actually, last time I was doing this is my second time in, in a year. The way you made that presentation, I thought you were on Shark Tanks. The way you really <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the you business. Need a, you need a chair. Do you want to sit down there? Thank uh, you. I need the exercise, so thank you, though. Okay. I appreciate it. Pass those down. I have a business card. We haven't had any updates on so we uh, Oh, Mitch, you want to pop that computer oh, no. down here real quick? Okay. So just to give you a little bit of background, and I'll keep this brief because I know you you submitted the documentation, so I don't want to waste your time. Um, we applied for a permit, and uh, it was I think we paid, and this is just recollection somewhere around four, it was like twelve hundred to seventeen hundred dollars, something in that range. Um, we were issued a permit by Tom Ronan, Rollins, oh, and uh, then we we. Uh, commenced our operation to, to install solar. And just to give you an idea of where we're looking to put it, um, is everyone here familiar with where VP Supply is located on that road? Yes, yeah. we'll look at it. Okay, so there are, there are three main structures to VP Supply there. There's the main storefront in the very front, and there are two storage buildings in the back uh, that are blocked pretty much by the, the main building in the front. And uh, we're looking to install solar <clears throat> on the south facing roofs of the two warehouse buildings in the back of the property. And um, just to give you an idea here, this is, I don't know if all you can see it. Mm -hmm. How many square footage between those, uh, that you're going to put on? How many square footage of panels? between those two uh, roofs? Oh, let's see here. That's a great question. Each panel. Yeah, the help us if we dim the lights a little bit, or make us see it. Yeah, 242, and they're about... 242, and they're about... It's like 3,600 square feet. Between the two buildings. The buildings are both approximately the same size? No, the, the one building here you can see is quite a bit longer than the other one. And uh, so this is the, the uppermost building. So if you're facing BP supply from the road, yes. the uppermost building on the left hand side is the back. And uh, this would be on the far side of it. So you can only see a small corner of that building from the road front. And or from uh, commercial drive. Yeah, from commercial drive. And the part of the building you can see is the north side of the building. Mm -hmm. So our panels would go on the other side, so you couldn't see them at all. What's the power being supplied to? The main, or is it going to be going to the other buildings? Or So it, we tie it into the main service that comes into VP Supply at that location. Right. And it's, it, we're doing it to offset the, the electrical consumption. Well, I understand, you know, the yeah, use sorry. of it. Sorry. My question would be is, are you going to supply power to all three buildings or one building, the main building? Yeah, so what the way the power comes in that building, the main power supply comes into the storefront right. in the in the very front the front building there. Right. And then the power is tapped off that to the other two buildings. The other two buildings. So, so we're, this would be the 
Yeah, so are, you gonna, are you going to be able to generate enough electricity from those panels to uh, to do that? Yeah, so the, the, the premise was to offset 100% of our usage at that location. Okay, we'll, we'll exceed it and then just send it back into the grid. So we're trying to be what we call net zero. Yes. Um, so in the summertime, actually, we're going to overproduce. Okay. And then so. in the wintertime, we're going to underproduce. So during that overproduction time, we build up a credit on our bill. And then we buy it back in the wintertime for the same rate that we sold it to import. So I've got another quick question here. It says to you install a large scale more than 10 solar system. What scale is the size are you planning to put in there when you say a large scale? So the bring that down to my language because I'm not familiar with that. Yeah, and that makes sense. So there's just to put it in perspective, there's a 10 kW system is around 10,000 watts and uh, we're looking to put in 55,000 watts. So a large so scale. Five times as much then. Yeah. So if my math is right. Correct. Yeah. So and the other thing to put in perspective is at my house, I use I have a 20 kW solar array at my house, mm -hmm. um, and that's to offset a residential application. So. Yeah, some of the cases that we have before us were to subsidize some of the certainly not used. I think what you do is you take your utility bills and you divide it by some factor, and it comes out how much. 55,000 kW is going to actually supply. Have you done that calculation? Can you give us that information? Is it going to be more than half? Is it going to be three quarters? So uh, from, from on that building there, that would cover 100% of our usage. 100%? Yes, that's correct. So we're trying to be, you know, our company distributes renewable energy products and we're trying to be competitive in the landscape and, and reduce our electrical consumption. So it's kind of a, a two-fold application where we're, we're trying to uh, lower the cost of our electric usage at that location, uh, keep us competitive in the marketplace, sure. and then also um, to do the environmentally um, you know, conscious thing for, for what our business model is. Then I would come back to you and ask you why, obviously, you've done some calculations to get a 100% factor in there. Would you back off a little bit if we kind of looked at this and you're going five times as much? Why not three times as much? Well, so Is your a, intention to try to get 100% replacement? Yeah, so we're trying to offset 100%. Zero. Yeah. I'm sorry. What are you saying? Mm -hmm. I'm waiting on that kind of generator. Yeah, I know. It. So it's going to be a plus side in the summer and a minus side in the winter that's going to balance itself. So oh, is that true? That's yeah, nice that's, that's correct. So right now, from now on. I wanted him to say it as well. Yeah, from now on. He did. The way I. When you said it to me, that's why I interpreted it. All right. Yeah, and from now from now until um, um, about October, September, October, we're going to be. Uh, overproducing what we're using, and then in the winter time we underproduce. So, at the end of the year, a full yeah, billing cycle, yeah, it's zero. It's zeroed out. Okay. And I then, have no further questions at this time. And it kind of, if I if I may add to that, sure. Um, why why do we go 55,000 watts? At the time we applied for the permit, we were unaware that there was a cap of 10,000 watts, uh, a limit limitation here in within this this zoning area. So after we obtained the permit, we went and bought all the materials for it, and then we also had our roof replaced. Um, so you could support it. Correct. So we spent, we've actually spent money on the materials. Um, we spent money on the, on the roof Renovation. replacement, yeah. and uh, so we actually have those materials sitting so in our warehouse. Yeah. I'm going to ask one more question. I'm sorry. Sure. This is no, interesting to me, and I know it's interesting. No, I'm, I'm happy to help. We, we think it's very interesting. And I'm sure the councilman <laughs> also thinks it's very interesting. The question I have is, you've done some calculations, and it seems like you guys are very brilliant and understand what you're doing here. But if you, no, followed, if you followed our laws today, what kind of benefit would a 10 kW give you? You, we know 55 would Monetary be... Monetary leaders? That is correct. Okay. Um, yeah, just to give you a ballpark. Just a Watch you stay within the law. If, if you did 10,000 watts. Yes. Okay, so 10,000 watts. Um, I mean, you, you produce around $1,000. Just it's easy math, around $1,000 in savings. About $1,000 savings? Yes, so, 1000 to 1200 bucks. And if you get 55,000 watts, it'd be about $5,500. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's, just, that's the math. That's what it'd be four of the five. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question. Makes sense. Is your, you were granted a uh, permit. Correct. A while back. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. So, no, I'm, 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 I'm
we were granted the permit. Right. Um, and we, it took a little while to get get the materials and then get the yeah, roof redone. That's what took so long. Yep. And then, um, then it fell in the winter time. We didn't feel like we were rushed, so we we were um, we were just taking our time to get it done when the conditions were good. And uh, and then we were work stopped. The permit we actually, runs for a year, correct? And it says it right on the face of the permit that it's only good for a year. And once that year runs, it's uh, it's no good. It's That's correct. So, so oh, it's you, you got the permit, yeah. but you didn't have to come here for a variance. You had gotten the permit. Correct. Yeah. So we did. Yeah. So the the only thing that's jumping out at me right now is the use variance, and we have a harder criteria to follow for use variance mm -hmm. as opposed to area variance. So um, I see there's financials here, but I might not be understanding all of it. If you could show, were you able to show that financially you couldn't do it any less on a, on a smaller scale? I, I think to, to expound on that, the first question on your use variance application is reasonable return. And what it says is that the subject property is not capable of yielding a reasonable rate of return if used for its present use or developed, redeveloped, or used for any other use permitted in the district in which such property is located. There is no means other than the granting of the variance by which the property can yield a reasonable return. Such inability, and I think this is what Lenore is asking you, such an ability to yield a reasonable return must be shown by specific fact, dollars and cents, from an expert or authority in economic deprivation, not the unsupported opinion of the owner or those appearing for the owner. So I think she's asking you what financial data in terms of tax reports, uh, financial statements, uh, reports from financial experts or authorities, have you provided to show that you can't yield that reasonable return? So I'm going to defer to the CFO. At this well, point. Because we may think it's a good idea and understand sure. everything mm -hmm. you're saying to be on the same page, but the criteria that we would have to follow so that we... Yeah, we, just so you know, that was, uh, I didn't really know how to respond to the, that question in the framework that it's established because I just thought that we were probably didn't fit that questionnaire as well. And just the way it all evolved was we initially got a permit to build this solar system for the size that mm -hmm. we're looking to do. So we made commitments financially on that where we did buy the materials for it. We, we still have them stored. They're still sitting in storage. And as a result of that, um, you know, we also borrowed money to finance the, the balance of that. So we've incurred the debt, we're paying down the debt with a understanding that we were going to get a return on this investment in uh, savings from the electric. So that's the financial uh, information that I provided. Oh, did you provide the loan statements, tax returns, things no. such as that? No, because I don't see the how... statements? No, because, uh, again, this is specific to this case only. And that's what we provided because the way it evolved and the because way Because you didn't think you needed to be here. Pardon me? Because you thought you didn't need to be here for the variance because you had the permit? Yeah, initially. initially. That was our initial. Yeah. So yeah. We, right. we, still had a, we still had time left over right. within that, the yeah. permit time to finish the project. And we were, we were issued a work stop yes. within that time frame. So we, we were unaware that we'd have to be even applying for a, for a variance at all. So was the work stop within the one year? It yeah. was. It was? It was. That is correct. I guess I don't follow the timeline. So what, so what, just so you're aware, we, we applied for the permit. Um, in 14. Correct. According to your... And then we had a year to do it. And then um, we, we were going to get, we were caught, we actually, Steve actually called to ask if we could have extra time to put it in. So we could we could put it in when the conditions were a little more favorable. Sure. And at that point, we were said, "No, you have one year to finish it." So we went, to, "Okay, we'll get we'll get on it within that year period." And then we were issued a work stop. And, yeah, but and so, it was in 15. And so this from that, correct. So from that period on, we've been trying to 
to we've we've had some discussions back and forth with Mr. Booth, and we've been uh, trying to figure out the best way to apply because this it was hard for us to figure out a way to make this sort of application to, to get in front of you. Basically, we weren't we weren't quite sure how to approach it uh, to get your ear through this. Yeah, we were trying to fit into you know, your use variance rules and so forth. I think this came up once before about the solar system with it being a use variance and yes. kind of like... And we researched that, talked to the state, they said it's a use variance, yeah. not an area. Mm -hmm. But it still isn't really clear, it's not an easy one. So we, you know, we were just having a hard time trying to figure out how to get in, how to get in front of you and because we really didn't fit into the confines of that document you know, why we're applying, because we, we had issu been issued the permit, we'd done some, you know, uh, acquiring some work and acquiring some materials and, yeah. and, and so forth, so that's that's why it took so long to get here. The estimated yeah. cost back in November 3rd, 2014, it says estimated cost 175000 what's that? So that's the total, total cost of the installation of the, the materials and all the labor associated with the completion of that project. Based on a 55K? Yes, yes. yes. Or KW? All right, and also the fees were 1,086, am I correct? That's what it says here. Yeah, right? so yeah. Have, have you been refunded that money? We have not. Oh. So the application, I guess Byron has a great question, is this application even valid at this time? Because it's been continuous from 14, November 14 to November 3rd or 17 would be three years. So back it off six months, so it's two and a half years old. Well, that's why he made a new application. Well, is, are you making Nothing a new one's old. Yeah, this is yeah. a new one. Well, I thought he was saying this is a new one because that no, was he had to stop work from the first. He had to come because of the stop work. He's here. Right, he was here. never before us. Right, right. Before tonight, we were unaware. We're, that we're here to ask you to reconsider. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so please. Do you have anything that you could add to? Yeah, help this us? is puzzling. No, it is a little bit puzzling. Yeah. No. Uh, just so you know, we struggled to apply our <laughs> situation to the parameters. Okay. In most cases, use variances are for a use. Exactly, that's why. Our code describes small scale and large scale. Our permitted use section only allows small scale, hence the use variance. They're going for a large scale. Well, going back to November 3rd, 2014, this was approved. The permit was issued in error. Oh, the was ordinance was less than six months old. He was pissed and June Rollins oh, okay. didn't realize that there was a limit on 10K. Um, they had called to renew the permit. And so when I happened to look at it, said, wait a minute. So when did they call to renew it? I can't be sure of that. It was close. There's no documentation there. It, it was a few days before the expiration. So anyone yeah, comes this. before us with solar panel questions, anything larger than 10, they need a use variance. Correct. And were we going to look into that? Was some the town board is town board is, is, is Right, that's what I thought from one of the other. So are you have any documentation of any extension, any phone calls from these folks here, or from any communications from either Tom Rose or anybody else about it, the extension? No, the... Because uh, I see that they're the under the sun office, side. I, I give them the call. What? I, if they're in the yeah, office, if Joe Tom is in the call, yeah. and in the office, there's, I give the call right to them. Official paperwork there, but we don't have it at our disposal. Right okay, now. so there is. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. No, that's fine. So we're, we're, we're asking to please be considered to allow us to, to finish that, the work that we started, and, uh, you know, just... From our standpoint, you you can't see it from really a public place. Um, you know, the main the main front edge of the road is blocked by the main portion of the building, and then the side property is also blocked by the uh, the strip mall that's out there. So you you know, provided that someone actually is going to go find the solar array out there, I'm not sure anyone would even know it was out there. Yeah, so they're only going to be on the roof. They're not going to be any standalone panels. No, no, no. Like it's on the so, so it, you know, really, okay. Yeah. I, got, yeah. I got a couple of questions. Yeah. Yes. Okay. How old, are they, how old are them buildings that we're talking about putting the roof panels in? Um, I couldn't tell you. I we did a structural analysis of them. Yeah, and they're, they're yeah, sturdy yeah, yeah. enough to carry the panels. We, well, we have yeah, they refurbished the, the roofs, yeah. both of the, the well, panels. When they refurbished the roofs, they put metal roofing on it, and it looks great. They're all brand new. And usually you do that so the snow's on the outside. That's one of the things that was 
Oh, okay, well, I'm, really, uh, hey, you know, I get a little screwy once in a while. No, no, I mean, that's and like he's point. saying, you so can't see it from the, yeah, okay, so it's fine. But once in a while, okay, if I just happen to be in a neighborhood and there's something going on there, and also if I was in the Harvard Fireman and we had a call there, and I was zipping around there, you don't know what's on that roof. At night, you can't tell them solar panels or not. They don't reflect, they don't light up. And if there's two, three inches of snow, they're up there. This is why I'm asking these questions. Because if the weight of it comes down, or even if the weight doesn't come down, and like the gentleman, one of them says, well, you won't even see them. That's just it. You won't see them. And unless they're placard or marked, you don't even know they're there. And you can get killed real quick with that. Are they reported to the fire department? They should be. They no. should be reported. The question is, are they reported? reported? I have no idea. Well, you being a fireman, I thought maybe. I have no idea. Because, I, and I'm saying this in a very serious note, if you get up on top of that roof, not knowing what you're going to, and all of a sudden if the power is not shut off and you're trying to put an axe through it, you can get knocked on your butt. So, just so you're aware, the current code, the NEC code that, that, that we're in compliance with for this time, every solar array has to have a fire protection disconnect, um, so that, and they're, they're clearly marked. So when you go to the building, it says this is a dual power source building, um, uh, second power source is photovoltaic, and you can disconnect it at that location for a fire disconnect. Well, because you'd have the same issue yeah, if it's just a 10K or 9.8K and the yeah. fireman goes there at that. Well, you better hope somebody's there at 2 in the morning. <laughs> well, so the, the, other, yeah, right. saying, the other thing is, uh, just so you're, just to alleviate your fears, we do a structural analysis by an engineer, so we have an engineer review all of our... our well, I, I know you said that when you started, but I was looking at the brand new roof, and I was saying, I put a brand new roof on there, so they can carry, put the panels on there and carry the weight, and I just, you know, okay. Yeah, no, I just wanted, to, okay. How many... How many is only going to be one switch to kill all that? Yeah, there's there's one there's one main switch. Where's it going to be located? On um, that one, you, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. Okay. How much money you got invested already in this? I mean, there's ballpark. We did the new roofs. I think that was around eight thousand. Um, and then we've got the solar panels themselves. Um, I can tell you the cost of the materials right now. Didn't you say 100 Well, it says on here the cost of it's 175. The cost of the materials are 70,000. You got 70,000 dollars in this. Yeah. There's, no, there's actually a bill of materials attached to the package there, plus the extra amount that they spent on the roof. You said 80,000 for the roof. I think, if I'm recalling correctly, around 80,000 for the new roof and uh, 70,000 for the materials right now. I have a question just about panels in general. Sure. As time has gone on, do you see the panels from an efficiency side becoming more efficient or, or getting smaller? Yeah, so, so some that 10 years ago, a panel may have been, I don't know, 4 by 4 yes. maybe now they're 2 by 2 or something. I mean, that is correct. As so, we speak, that's happening. It's, yeah. It's technology, like your TV sets and whatever. It is progressing. It's almost like your cars and uh, electric cars and that. And the batteries are getting better and better and better all the time. Yes. Well, well that's, I guess, you know, and I know that the, the town board's looking into the, the, the uh, you know, how, how did we come up with 10? Um, I think, is, is it, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a number that's, that's what the code said, and it's, you know, um, but I'd be more concerned from my standpoint, only my standpoint of location, site, where they are, um, those some of those things, but I know we have to follow what's on the what's on the books right now with that side. You know what I'm talking about? If it's in your backyard, and you have you have ten panels lined up in your backyard, kind of like up at the airport. Do you ever go by the airport and you see those yeah. rows and rows and rows and rows of panels? I don't. I'd be more concerned if that was in your, your backyard. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, I, understand your, your I understand but what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. The initial question was. Is the, is the technology changes and the answer to your question is yes. So your square footage is small. The square footage over time actually decreases. So yes. if you stay at the 10 kW cap, over time that footprint of that is going to shrink and shrink and shrink. Gotcha. Yeah. So that's that's that answers my question. That's, that's a good analogy. Mm -hmm. exactly. so Do you know if it's like a microchip, if that's the analogy. Any, if there has been any headway of things changing oh. where if they waited, they wouldn't have to come before us for this use variance, if they wait and see what's going on with the town? I know that the town board 
looked at this issue initially. I know we had public hearings, public input. We had a citizens committee, and the 10,000 whatever was the recommendation, and that's what was passed. Uh, I know that the dentist that came in here uh, a month or two after your meeting came to the town board and asked that the town board uh, reconsider. Uh, and I think at the time it was mentioned the smaller sizes now of the panels. Uh, I know that Dave Reynolds, who's in the audience, uh, at our last meeting uh, introduced to the board that he is looking into uh, amending our ordinance uh, as it relates to solar energy. Um, and I think he just announced that at the last uh, meeting. So that was a week ago. So, so can I ask, so Dave, yeah. what would, do you have a suggestion maybe helping us out here because of the strong verbiage and the use variance? And do you think it might be to their benefit if they hold off a little or? What well, made it? Or do you think it will be changed at the town board? Yeah, but he can't, he oh. can't change he can't change the law, nor can he change that criteria to get a use variance. No, I don't want a use no, variance. No, I'm wondering if yeah, at the board level, the if they're board revisiting can, yeah, and the board changing can change. it, the amount. Yes, the board can change that, and then that would alleviate it. Yeah, and I'm sure you understand the board, your board, has got parameters that you have to. Yeah. Your question is, where are we in the town board? Yeah. As council just uh, said, we I introduced it as a uh, we're going to look into it. Uh, I had phone conversation just moments before I came in here with another party. Uh, one of the questions that I'm asked is why the 10K? Why was the line drawn there? Mm -hmm. And I have a hard time explaining it. I don't know. I'm sure there was a rationale behind it, whether it was the way it looked or what, I don't know. But, as you point out, the technology is changing so that 10KW 10 years ago and 10KW now, yeah. there's a marked difference. Uh, the other point in terms of technology, there are, uh, you can buy uh, roof shingles now, do your whole roof as a solar array. Uh, that's gonna be more than 10K, I gotta believe, but as, again, the technology is changing, I'm not sure that 10K should be the criteria. Perhaps the way they, the way it's uh, configured, the, the structure that it's on, how visible is it, or, or is it completely invisible except if you're overhead in a plane? I think those are all factors. I also realize you've got parameters you have to work with. It is a zoning board of appeals. I don't know really if answered your question, yeah. but no, we're working on it, and I guarantee you it's not gonna happen within the next few months, it's going to take a while. That did help, though. It's, even if it doesn't change it, it does help Thank understanding you, it. Thank, Thank you. you. I do find it, I find it very hard because of those numbers and thinking it might be okay, but hopefully they do revisit it because everyone that comes before us, it's going to become a use, and I don't, I think it's hard for anyone to come to a Board of Appeals to prove this well, I think that, that, that yes. I think they were uh, the technology, as everybody has kind of said, is changing such that what well, may have been a four by four panel is maybe now a two by two, and someday maybe one by one. 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 Yeah. And, and, uh, okay. Where were we? Did anybody? Byron ask? was going to ask something. Byron. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, as part of the the single greatest problem. We haven't failed or made it yet, but the single greatest problem to the use for it variance is to show the uh, financial wherewithal, not for your company, but that the property can't produce for use variance. It can't produce some income, either as Herb said earlier, the existing use or a, uh, any, of the, any of the permitted uses within the zone. And that's done by a forensic person, which might be an accountant and with the aid of probably an appraiser that would look at each of them and say it. In your case, uh, <coughs> wrestling in my own mind is I'm saying, well, if you use the property in general, like if you look at uh, where use variances were at least looked at, whether granted or not, it's generally 
perhaps it's a vacant piece of property. So you can go and you can put the, the book of means together and you can say what each one is worth and what, it would, what you can rent it for and you can build a building. In your case, it's complicated because for you to, I, I mean, what do you have to prove? That you're going to move out to be able to rent it to somebody else so that you can't go with that cost. So is it, my, I own my own mind. I'm wrestling with it, a hot handle. Yeah. Yeah. Would it... Just so I'm understanding correctly, so if we're if we're able to produce if we're producing a monetary dollar from that system being on our building, not about the system. Okay, it's just about the building. It's about the property itself. The property itself has to prove that it's present condition. It can't make a reasonable return. You have an operating business there. It's either making money or it isn't. If you weren't making money, you got one. The first check mark would be in your favor. But even then, it still doesn't make sense because he's not trying to change the business. He's trying to do something no, to, to make more profit. They went out and made a substantial. They made a substantial investment based on a permit that this town gave them, and now they're pulling it back. Um, I think they proved the fact through the invoices that are here and the fact that they re, uh, they re, um, purposely. Uh, those rules is they've already invested a certain amount, you know, considerable amount of money for this particular project. So that's really the basis of that's our right. submission for a reconsideration. That's what I'm tangling over because of going back. And I got to ask the, uh, the attorney here: uh, Is there any legal basis here? Because no, they had permitted. a year. They got the permit. That's, that was they my had a year. Yeah. The year ran. That's gone. The year that is. Run, no. That's but nothing. He, so in order to do something, they had to do something within that year. Sure, right? we, they could. They could have built it. Was we were issued a permit. Yeah, 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 the other issue that you're wrestling with is, well, gee, the codes officer or whatever issued a permit. No, that's the sure Valley that. View. As long as it was on within right. that year. I well, no, but it. that's the Valley View case right. where uh, Les Dean erroneously issued a building permit for the guy to go too close to the road. Yeah, right. He built it. That went all the way to the appellate division in Rochester, and they said, you tear it down. Yeah. You, you can't. You, the fact that the codes officer made a mistake doesn't destroy the effectiveness of the statute. I agree. And just one final question, if I may ask you. Back in 2014, the law was already with the Citizens Committee, and it was already documented. It was passed. Wasn't it was passed. It? Yeah. Like June. six months. Yeah. Six months. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, all, that's all I need to know. Thank you. So it was actually law at that time. But they hit a stop, stop work order. In it's in here. I read that. Yeah. Yeah. Joe, when was the stop work order? Days before the permit expired, I'd say. Yeah, it's And they would have to be completed. The, the request was made at was least three days, days before expiration, and the installation of the panels literally is not more than two or three days. Tops. Yeah, no, we, we, we were weeks. We were a few weeks. We could have had it in. Well, the actual permit was dated 12 19, 2014. The legal notice to stop work was December 17. 2015, if I go by this. Yeah, yeah the panels are yes. very quick to install. Very quick to install. Yeah, well, I don't know how the record oh, but I, that's the start work was less than a year. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Uh, December 17th, December 19th, it was two days less. Yeah. yeah. And so one year? Yeah, so you could have had a minute, two or three days. Yeah. Yes. And we, we should have all that thing before. So how come? Legally, I don't see anything wrong. Okay, we did. So, right. as far as we were, it's that quick. Because we, we took extra time to get the roof redone, that was one. And then we, at that point in time, had approached the winter. Um, the, uh, so we, we, it just it wasn't conducive at the time. And the other thing was trying to line up contractors. So by the time we got the roof done, the next time the contractor that was going to install it could have done it, and their time schedule was, was about that time that we were doing it. That's when they were free. So, you know, it, it, the things we're trying to balance are getting the materials here and also getting a contractor that's re, that can put it in for a reasonable price. So, you know, kind of, we're kind of at the mercy of, of the contractor putting it in. That's why. So, you know, from VP from supply standpoint, we're trying to be a very good, you know, business in the area. We're trying to do things. Well, you're being good citizens. You're coming to try and do it right. 
you know, we, we tried to do a permit, you know, we thought we might, there might be a chance we run over, so we actually called in advance, we just didn't go ahead and do it, and say, you know, we'll get it done, no one's going to know the difference. We were trying to be, you know, forthcoming and, and be a good, you know, a good steward to the community in, in, in the town that we're in. You know, we're obviously trying to uh, make money at our company, any amount of money we can make to help us be profitable is very important. Um, well, you're also being a good citizen. You're using the solar energy to help augment your business. I, I mean, it's it's good for everybody. It's just we got a problem with this little part of the law. That's all. We're, we're with you 100%. With you. I think it's I, I the criteria that we have to follow. Uh -huh. That's putting a roadblock. Yeah, and it's uh, you know it's certainly tough on our end because we've made a pretty significant investment. You know, and and it's you know we're just saying. Can you help us? How do you help us? How do we how do we how do we get out of this predicament? I mean, we're in a predicament. How do we, how do you help us out of it? Or how any advice that you could offer would be certainly appreciated. I was once I saw the you know the parameters of the use variance. I said to Jay, "Oh, Jay, we're wasting our time here. This is there's no way you could fit into this box that they have here and so forth." So you know, our approach was let us at least let them know our circumstances and then you know we'll let you guys do whatever you thought made sense from there on here's all the facts here's our circumstances this is why we're here and that's it yeah we uh, who, was it? Who, who determines if it's a use or an area um i researched it through the association of towns and i also call john kennett on Niagara county planning who i rely on quite frequently and both said it was definitely a use area and if that ever had to, I'm just curious because I think this is going to come up more often now. If that ever needed to be changed, which it seems like it might, because it's almost impossible to prove it. Right, that's because why it's not a, another business that you percent use variances were denied. But I could see some of the others because you're actually opening and you have the possibility of opening different businesses. But to run your energy. I have a discrepancy of, or if it is, not, not just that I know your research, but I'm saying whoever makes that decision, should it be a use variance or should it be an area variance? The unfortunate part about it is I think there's two factors here. What Byron said earlier about the financial statements and the same thing, I think the uh, councilman said, so right, we're restricted on what the law is today at 10 kW. Uh, I think these folks fall into that category where they're outside the box. Well, yeah, yeah. He, he basically mentioned it. Yeah. But getting back, because I wanted yeah. to finish that for my, my thought, is there anything after here? Because I think it's, we as a board are going to be facing this. Is there anyone? Well, that we I think Dave's on the right track in terms of possibly changing the ordinance. That's a long way away. Who ordinates? I ask who. Is the council person that oversees that area? Rich Woodland. Rich Woodland? Yeah, that may be somebody to at least that we can talk to and try and work with. Yeah, I think there is support on the board. I believe. I shouldn't speak for the board, but I think there but is that's, support. That's somebody, Rich Woodland is in your district. That's somebody who I would, if I was in your shoes, I would be probably tomorrow. I'd be calling him up and, and uh, so what can his support to push this along through the town board? So you, what you're recommending, so if I understand correctly, is to go speak to Mr. Woodland, uh -huh. and then see if they'll take a, a vote in the in the town board. Well, well it's, it's a bigger deal. It's, yeah, it's a little bigger than that, but you, you know. You could have uh, someone on your side to push it along with Mr. Reynolds to, to try to. Uh, I have a question for numbers. Dave and Herb, if we may. I mean, and then we'll we'll make you finish. So if they change, so you're saying there's a possibility that they could change the numbers, and then we wouldn't have to be in front of, of in front of this this board. But we don't know how long that will take. Correct. Right. Yeah. 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 Like oh, we understand the circumstances that you guys are facing as well. And so could we ask the town board or legally through the zoning if we can get a different definition of solar panels? By maybe changing it from a use to an area or an area. I think area. that's by law. I don't think the yeah. town board can. Well, the reason make why I say that is because you asked someone for a determination. Yeah. It wasn't on a base a law, was it? Was it on some kind of a base law that? I don't know what they were relying on. They said it's definitely a use variance. It's not. There's no. Who are they? Um, 
I talked to the association of the towns, Lori Mithen, M-I-T-H-E-N, DeMasi, and I talked to John Kent, K-E-N-T, at Oneida County Planning. So the town I mean, board can't override that. These are people that you might want to also look into yourself to say, we're, you know, yeah. I'm not understanding, I'm not really believing this is a true use variance. And they might, you know, they might be changed. Let me ask you, what is it, uh, what is the process for just modifying or uh, changing the code from small scale to, let's say, big use? So a that council person would yeah. propose <clears throat> an amendment okay. to the zoning ordinance, either a uh, text or a map amendment. Mm -hmm. The board would then make a determination as to whether they wanted to go forward with that. And what they would do is they'd schedule a public yes. hearing uh, for a local law, because they'd have to pass a local law amending our code. And that would be a month down the road for the public hearing. And at the public hearing, the board could either grant the amendment they could defer on it for further information, or they could deny. Sure. Um, we've had several of them. We've got five or six of them coming up at our next meeting because we're cleaning up the code with some uh, typographical errors that Joe found in the code. So it's it's done. Okay. Is there anything we can do to participate in that process or to help well, enhance the... I'd be glad to sit down and work with you. Okay. I, I don't think we need to reinvent the wheel. Sure. I think it need, this needs some tweaking. I would defer to Joe. The state has put out a model code. I don't know exactly how that fits, but uh, I think we can work it out. Yeah. I do. Well, it sounds like this group really doesn't have an issue with solar whatsoever. No. It's just that... The circumstances are such that there's limits to what you can do on that. And I mean, in general, just I think changing that code makes a lot of sense for any city in America. I mean, we're in a global uh, economic uh, competition, and it's, the competition is fierce out there. You guys all know, you know. And now, for us, VP Supply, we're a distributor of plumbing, heating, renewable energy, kitchens, baths, and so forth. We're not competing with Amazon that we don't even know where they're from, but like, you know, it's gonna, everybody's gonna face these changes of technology and so forth, so we need to all be in position to fight these forces back to basically preserve ourselves, whether it's in you know, Hartford or Utica or Rochester, Buffalo, and so forth, and you know, and anything we can do to help somebody to reconsider this code we'd like to. You probably will be able to go go and use that discussion at the board at the town yeah. board meeting. Especially when they have a hearing. Okay. But because it's also difficult for us to want to help and feel like our hands are tied sure. as well. One well, of the conversations with you the, the uh, uh, your representative on the town board prior to that. I, that's what I would yeah. now I guess I would have to ask at this point, do you want to proceed with our hearing right now and and uh, have us um, go through the, yeah, just proceed as normal. It's that's, that's kind of, I'll leave, that, I'll leave that up to you, the applicant, so we'll. I don't know what that means. So he's asking if he'd like us to, to let them continue with the vote. Um, We're going to either approve yeah. or disapprove. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, yeah. it has to do what you have to do. Or another, or another well, that might be helpful yes. if they get a just response from each other. What do you recommend? Why, if he gets, uh, if he does get sport. denied, would that be detrimental to him? Um, it could be tabled. Yeah, so I, I agree with that. Yeah. Okay. Table, and the only table. reason I agree, the only reason I can agree with that because it's a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. If they don't pursue it, they can get thrown back in their face that they didn't care. Mm -hmm. And if they do and it gets shot down, it goes. It's a double-edged sword. I it's got the good idea. Just table it. I think it's okay. Need a motion to table a second. I'll do a motion to table. Well, sure. yeah, I like you. Yep, yep. Right, you want to say something first? I do. Okay. okay. I'd like to uh, go through the criteria first, and then if you still want to make your motion to table, I'd certainly second it. Uh, but this way, they'll hear the, the criteria for a use variance, and then they'll know the ones that they already have in their favor when they're talking to the town board, or if they come back to us, they'll know what they need to fix. So it'll kind of send them in a direction to come back. Okay. 
No question I, is ignorant. I do have a concern. Does anything that we face here get um, passed on to the town to feel, I, I, I'm going to speak for myself, that I think we're going to run into this over and over again now. I think, and I think it's something that does need to look, be looked at. And um, so if that, I would like that in the minutes because well, I don't know if you're going to work yeah, I think that the yeah. town board is well aware of the mm -hmm. situation. I think right. that they, I know that they are working on it right now actively. And uh, I don't know how quick, you know, how quick yeah. that can happen, but I think the more individuals like yourselves that contact uh, your representative and let them know that this is important, that it's an important issue that needs to be addressed in a timely fashion. Yeah. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to, with my alum from UFA, I still would like Karen's motion to go forward because I think yeah. the criteria is going to be different right. on each application that comes forward. Right. And I think if the gentleman wants to retract it, I would retract it and pursue the avenues that we're not giving them, but suggesting them to go through your councilman and then come back or go through the councilman through the town board. But I think if we give you a criteria, we're going to base it on what you've got here now. There might be some denials there that you might want. Go ahead. I'm sorry. It's your motion. No, no. It's your Go ahead. Set your hand. I like that, though. Hands up. <laughs> Anyway, I just wanted to ask uh, our legal counsel. I mean, uh, you know, sometimes they, they, the uh, the applicant only asks for an advisory opinion, so to speak. You know what it is they need, and we just tell them, right? Oh yeah, and I right. think informally, that's I think what Byron was trying mm -hmm. to have you do was informally right. express your feelings exactly or the idea that then it's going to be tabled so that they know I mean, we already know that they have to show financial right. documentation right. which we don't have that here right. so there's right. no right. reason going through the criteria right. it fails immediately because that's not here I've right. got one more thing to add if you don't mind. sure mm -hmm. so <clears throat> from a time sen time sensitive standpoint we are um, we made, you know, we've, we've struggled with how to try to fit in the confines here. So we're here today. Mm -hmm. um, the issue we're facing currently is that we have a grant that was awarded to us by NYSERDA, the New York State Research and Development Authority. Right. Mm -hmm. And that is that is expiring. We have to return that money back if we don't put this in. How the, much is it? It's $55,000. Well, what's the expiration date? The expiration it's, date it's has 40, gone. It's 47000 75 okay, percent. Okay, sorry, you're right. That's okay. okay. But when do you have Still to uh, return it yes, if it not used? So we have applied for multiple extensions. And what, what do you have and right this now? Is, this is the last extension that they're going to allow what, us. what is the time frame left on it? I think it, you know, it should be a matter of weeks. It's based point. on the uh, outcome of this meeting, Ms. Healy. Yeah, okay. so... I have a question. Do, does it have to be wow. for the amount that you originally are requesting, or could you use their money towards the 10K? Yeah. Yeah. No, so no, they have a process. The grant would be on the project. Yeah, so two, two things to consider. One is we can't just roll the money that, that way. It would be a new project. We have to resubmit. Right, you have to get another grant. And then the grant amount. Today versus the grand amount that we were awarded back when we first got it is a lower level. And you so haven't used any of it, the grant money. No, we, we have reserve. It, it is in reserve, and we lose that money if we don't use it. It's tough, but you know. That's a bigger deal. We proceed now. That's a whole separate issue, right? I mean, but the point is. So what you're really, you're the attorney. It's not. I don't think it's a separate issue. Right? I think it's all. I like to hear the part of the financial hardship. You're the attorney. Well, I mean, I think, I think we. I mean, I, I hate to say it, but if there's only weeks left on the money, we're not going to, unless we do an emergency meeting or something, but you'd still have yeah. to, you, you, what, you, what you really need is you need somebody to bring this forward for you, showing, and, and I, what I was wondering is, now that they're in this predicament, now perhaps there is some financial uh, hardship, 
that will uh, take place should they not get now they're losing that sure. money. They, I mean, now we are starting to pile up some financial things, but I don't know what but we need to law know. How much buyer you're, beware at this point? Yeah, there yeah. is, but yeah, but, but I'm saying know. there's no. We, we don't have anything to work with. We don't know how much you know money you make. First of all, you know they there was on the sheet somewhere you you were supposed to fill out actually almost like a tax return, right? Yeah. You need a tax return, a current or mat, matter of fact, probably a few years tax returns. And we have some kind of form here that was completely empty. We didn't have any yeah. documentation. I, I forgot where it was, but it's on this application. It's here. It's, it's, right. it's completely There's absolutely blank. nothing filled out. So we have no idea if, you know, if you really, or this, or even what's happening now, present, here it is, right here, where it says NA, not applicable, applicant's uh, uh, provider of financial evidence. Date. So this would all need to be filled out. You probably need somebody who, you know, could financially explain. You need to show a unique hardship, um, right? Yeah, if that. this is not granted, what will happen? In other words, your company will collapse. Something like that. Well, no. no. I think and if they can't you know, show it, though. Right, but I, well, I think know. going a We're step further, I would love to talk to the people who are calling this a use variance because no, at this time we're not going to get anything How do you, done. Why couldn't that they right approach now? someone very well? Quickly you have somebody right here since saying he would no, work with them. No, I don't mean within them. the board. I'm talking right. about the verbiage that it's if we did, if, if, if we didn't towns, have to vote right? on this yeah, as a use variance, I think we could pass it. How long that's going to happen? Though? How long is that going to take? Or are we definitely correct? Did we get the right interpretation? I don't know, but I think that's going to take a long time before we get something changed. Yeah. Herb, am I right? It is, but that's why you're better off tabling it. Right. We still have Thank something you. to tell the grant people that we've made the applications before a board. That's what I said. It was tabled for additional I, documentation. I, I, I kind of the the is, denial is worse. Because the denial is worse. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Was, yeah. I think that's once that's you right. say it was denied, then. I think it makes sense to your whole background here. Yeah. I like your yeah. motion. Well, may, and maybe you got one hundred seventy eight thousand. Maybe with, uh, whoever you're dealing with at the state and the grant uh, could maybe at least place a, if they had to talk to somebody. S E R D A. Yeah, could place a call to the, to Joe, and he could say at least this is where we are in the process. And maybe you can get that. Uh, that next we will find that out tomorrow. I think that if we just uh, convey what took place here they may reconsider we don't know but we have to do something what so i'd like to call for a vote to table it i'll renew my motion look before we do that does anybody have another question for the applicant at all let's let's make sure that we okay Oh, is anybody and is there anybody in the public that wishes to speak on behalf of this particular application okay so, I'll go back then, I guess, to Karen. I'll renew my motion to table the entire matter. Motion made by Karen to table it. I'll second it. Second it. Aye. Good. I'd rather vote for it, but that's not the motion on the that's table. That's not the motion on the table. So, you're voting so against the No, I'm not going to vote against, uh, against the table on it. I, I'll, I'll, I'll vote to table it. Okay. Table. Aye. Aye. Yeah. So we Seven. Seven. Okay. I need, I need Did we give you a direction? Speak to our representative. Yeah. I was, I was Plus call it call. I'd also look sure. into myself, I would be pushing sure to see is this really sub we're bound to it, but I would if if I were in your I position, I would do further investigation to say how I would want someone to tell me how is this a use variance. Can I go over this total cost with you one more time? Sure. So 178,750. Yep. 47,750 is coming from the incentive. Correct. Now, is those figures from 2014 or current figures? Those were uh, at time of application. Yeah. Then that was the grant that was issued by NYSERDA. At that time. Yes. Have you done a cost analysis to see if the total cost has varied since then to now? Since we know the technology has changed and all that? No, the thing is, is the materials were already procured. And we all the materials were already yes. Just the labor may go. There's, 
Right. So you may have outdated material by now. Well, it's not what we do. I'm, I'm saying that, but realistically, it's the way the technology is changing. We're talking nearly two and a half and that's, years. But that's also the problem is that we, we can't, we have it and no one else wants it. Not only that, but I think don't you have to uh, stipulate the materials that you're using in a nicer sort of Yeah, we do. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so forth. So, but for economically, we want to use what we want. Sure. Because we, it's hard because of technology changes that you know it's impaired in the market. It's still useful for what we want to do with it. Yeah. So we'd like to be able to use that. As a board member, I got to say this personally. I think you're better off tabling it and handling it the way you're going to handle it. Okay. Because you have some reasons in here that I see that I think you can go forward. Especially with some people in this room that have just heard our conversation. All right, well, we do appreciate your time, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good, Good luck. luck. Thank you. Good luck. Joe? Okay. The application of AJ Signs to York Pinnacle LLC, 4454 Kellogg Road in Hartford. This is a manager plaza. The applicant is removing a large section of an existing pylon sign, updating it and replacing it in time. The sign exceeds the maximum allowed size of 128 square feet by 21 plus or minus square feet. Therefore, the applicant is seeking a 21 plus or minus square foot area variance. Welcome. Hi. My name is Bridget Schumacher. I'm the project manager from AJ Bridget Shoemaker for the AJ sign. Thank you. Representing the property. You're representing the property or AJ sign? I'm from AJ sign, but I'm the project manager on that. Okay. Um, really, uh, the question I've got, and I think I know the answer. The sign that you're proposing to put up, is that the exact size of the existing sign that you're going to take down? So the post and the manager box are all original. Yes. What we're doing is replacing the aluminum skins that you see here. So we're yes. taking down all this aluminum, replacing it with new aluminum. This box is the same size as this box, and we're adding an additional box here. The size is not going to change. No, it's not going to change. As far as well, I guess say footprint, everything yeah, stays the same. Yeah, the footprint is the same. Nothing changes. Exactly. Oh, we just want to move something around. Really. Yes, essentially, we're we're adding this cabinet here. What about the lighting? It's all LED, so it will be consistent. It will be softer to the human eye, but it is um, it's significantly more energy efficient than the. Uh, yeah, so it's not going to be out all night long, or is it? Um, it's whatever the time clock is set at now, it'll be consistent with what they're doing now. Okay, so you're not changing it? No. Well, that must be a non-conforming sign now, presently. Presently, it, it I believe. If it, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It has well, a, because um, we're not just moving things around. Right, uh, I believe, uh, Joe, this currently has variants on it for the size, or it's non or it's conforming at the size that it is currently. No, it's definitely non conforming. It's about yeah. 20 it feet Okay. And you're not making it any bigger. Right. Well, we are making it larger by 21 square feet, and that's why we're in front of you today. But we're not taking the posts out of the ground. So we're essentially using the same steel structure that's there. We're just removing the deteriorating um, aluminum and paint and structure, the old. Um, uh, fluorescent lamps, things like that, and then we're adding that additional cabinet, which equates to an additional 21 square feet to what's there now. Where's the, yes. Where's the additional 21 square feet? That's this cabinet here. But in terms of, oh, but in terms sorry. of area here between here and here, yep. that's the same. same. It's going between the here and here, is it's that the, the same? same. No, so the so you're not increasing the size. No, all we're doing Adding. is we're taking this, like this cabinet here. Yeah. We're making a new one because yeah. this one's deteriorating. And, and you're going to put it in there. It's this one's getting moved down, and a new one's going here. So Just there is this, no increase no, in size. No, this is larger. The second sign yeah. is larger than what's there. What, instead of yeah. four, larger than what was yes. in there now. Yeah. When it's not taking up any more square footage. No. Right. So no. we're allowing 
we're able to get Can all of the tenants. Non -conforming yeah. It's a non conforming sign. It's a non conforming sign. Right. 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 There's no change to the non conforming sign. And, and the new format will allow all of the various tenants, whether they're small mom and pops or the major retailers, to all be visible on this sign yeah. at, at a reasonable distance for traffic to slow down. And, because they're not all there now. Right. right. Nope, they're not all there now. He has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He has 14, 15. So let me ask you the question again. Right now, how many square feet of sign is there? Currently, you've got 90 plus 58.5, which is 148.5. And when you get done, how many do we have? 148.5 plus 21. So 100 and... Okay. So you're in, you're in, she's, she's adding the interior. The yeah. exterior is the same. Right. The interior is just being readjusted yeah. for more names. Right. The sign, and one larger name. The panels right. are changing in size in, in between the two yeah. towers. The sign's not getting That's taller all. and it's not getting wider. It's what you're going to see in dip, the, dip, the, the difference is, the is, is on the bottom. The clearance underneath the sign will be, a, there's a three-foot difference. No. Okay, there, there's what? a problem in this variance then. Okay. You represented the old sign as 58 plus 90 mm -hmm. at 148 square feet. That's correct. The new sign was represented the same size, 58 and 90. 58, 90 plus the 21, which was your overage. Which is the 169.5. The drawing that you're looking at doesn't have the 21 called out, but you did call it out to us, and it is on your letter. All right, but then if you're at 148 square feet now, you're already 20 over the, the maximum, so it'd be 20 plus 21. Which would be 189.5. It'll be 42. Because the notice said they were seeking a 21 foot plus or minus square foot area variance. In addition to what had already been given. Well, what Joe is saying, it's 90 by 58, which comes to 148.5. The 21 that you're asking for comes to 169.5. And Joe's saying now, are you saying that it needs another additional 20? I thought that 20 was built into the 90. She's at 148 now. She's already 20 square feet over the limitation. If she has another 121 feet, she'll be 41 square feet. Yeah, which you said it was already a nice yeah. farming sign. Yeah, but you got to go back to what the ordinance allows. You got to go today. back to what the ordinance allows. So that would make it over 40 feet. And the way it was represented on this drawing, I thought the new one was 148. Oh. Uh, so that means we advertised it wrong. That's what I thought. It was so it's really yeah. just, it's just for 148. It's really, 148. Yeah. 140. Yeah. It's really a correction in numbers, but it really doesn't change what's there or... Right. The, the footprint so it, doesn't change. Right, your, your footprint, you're absolutely correct. The footprint still doesn't change. What we're doing is we're rehabilitating the existing structure. So you minimize construction to minimize the costs. So well, do we have to actually go back to public notice then, I'm wondering? Because yeah, it's wrong by 20 feet. It's wrong. It's wrong, right? Public notice and hearing has to be publicized again. Mm -hmm. I agree. It's, yes. yes. So yes. Because it has to give notice to the public that they can come out and discuss it. And so if it's not accurate. It's like we lied to the public by giving them the wrong number. Yeah, but they lose a month. Wait, let, let's just bear it. Let's In hope four we hours. Don't. Maybe I can come up with a solution. I've okay. got to ask the zoning yeah, officer. Let's see if we can find a solution. We, well, not a solution, but possibly an answer. You're telling okay. me that the sign is 90 by 58? The existing sign, you've got two cabinets, one is 58, one is 90. So if we add that up, it's 148. My question to the zoning department now is, is that 148 totaled in the non-conforming sign right now? So that she's sitting there. The legal non-conforming sign size, correct. So she's going for an additional 21 feet or... 41 feet because it reverts the back to right. over the audience. Right. That's what that she's makes really sense. not getting yeah. that extra per se. It's not, because I think some people, when they hear it, they think, Oh, she wants well, no, she's got to apply for the total 40 yeah. feet. Okay, yeah. I mean, this is that we're requesting 
an additional 21 square feet over what's here. Right, but it was a long time So it's going to be lost again? Yeah. So it's really 40-something feet, right? Yeah, correct. Okay. Um, That's the old one. Can we use it to the low if it wasn't noticed properly? Notice properly. Because we didn't tell the people. Who were you looking at starting? If, if it was to be granted tonight, when would you have looked at starting? As soon as the permit is issued. The okay. facade rehabilitations are almost complete at that property. And they're going through and doing repainting and things like that. So this is really, you know, kind of one of those final components in um, cleaning up the property and attracting the tenants and bringing additional tax bases in. So they're, they're really putting a lot of weight on me to come out here tonight and get this. Are all those panels built? They will be, yes. They're already taken. Because I, I see something here. No, there we, are still vacancies there. Can we remove it and not put that and put up your save more sign by doing that? Well, this one, we're not going to take out. I can take off. I mean, I can lose some square footage off the bottom and make these panels is somewhat smaller. Well, that's what gets us within I don't know if that's going to change the application either. Yeah, it does. Yeah, do it in conformance with the application and leave it at 148 square feet. That's what I'm saying. Still that's 20 point. square that's feet. That's my more point. Than, yeah. More than yeah. You follow what we're saying? So we ha I'd have to take 20 square foot off of this cabinet in order to get it. Back to 148.5 or whatever that. 148. 148. Does it what she already has? She does have 148. She already has 148. She's gaining nothing. She's gaining nothing. Yeah, but then 14. what she can do, as long as they got vacancy, but she could take the sign down then and rebuild it right. without losing the right. I like to hear if there's anybody in the audience, those kind of complaints or whatever. Yes, I've got some questions. You said her long enough, right? Thank you, sir. Thank you, board. I'm Gail Evo here, and I live right behind at 47 Imperial Drive. And the neighbors at 40 at, on Imperial Drive have had a lot of issues with Hannaford. They expanded back closer to us, and we have garbage trucks, and we have deliveries all night long. The lights come in to the bedroom windows. So what I want to know is, is this whole thing going to be lit? Because right now this top part is not lit. Am I correct? No, it's all illuminated. It, it is not, right now. It may not be currently working because a lot of the sign is needs to be so this area and refurbished. So this whole is it okay that I'm asking her? <laughs> um, so this whole ninety or however many feet this is, top to bottom that you're proposing, is all going to be lit. It, it'll all be lit. It's not any larger than what it is now overall height and everything. Okay. So it's not going to be any taller than the building or anything like that. But it's all going to be lit. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it'll be turned off at the time at night. of night. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, okay. So this, this, there's not going to be any additional lighting here than there was over here because these, right. these center uh, ones right now, I don't think are lit. They're supposed to be. <laughs> The, the signs. Well, okay, my concern is the people the behind. New, the new landlord has come, the, the gentleman who purchased the property is doing a lot of work there, and this sign is was poorly maintained before he came in, so it needs a lot of work. Okay, so so the that's why you're seeing it not lit now, but it will be lit, but well, it will be on a time clock. Okay, so, so my concern, won't be in your bedroom windows. That's my concern, and the people on both sides of you <laughs> we were just having a conversation yesterday about this. That anything that's that may be higher than the building itself is going to be shining, right? Well, you in our bedroom, behind. I am behind it. So if this yes. is going to be, shining, it's not any taller than it is now. But right now it's not lit, so I can't tell if it's going to. Well, once you light it, whether it's going to be. This isn't taller than the building. So that's not going to no, be shining not, behind. No, the sign's the not going to be taller at all. The, this the, board has the, the right to tell to her if you're the applicant what time but the light, we can turn the light off if we, we wish. Appreciate we can it. grant yeah. the variance at a 10 o'clock or a 12 o'clock midnight if we wish. Mm -hmm. We can consider that here uh, as far as that. We would appreciate that because I know we, I did come to the town board here years ago on the um, the garbage dumpsters at three o'clock in the morning banging and all that stuff and a sign was put up and they still come. Yeah. I mean we 
<laughs> it was very frustrating for all the neighbors. So I only represent the landlord. Well, I, I understand that. I understand that. So, but there. if this board can some way limit the lighting at night so it doesn't affect the folks behind. I have a, I have a question. You said that it's going to be LED lit. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, from a uh, site perspective, is that any brighter, not brighter? I mean, it's in your opinion, so from what we've seen so far. I know. It, it's difficult to explain in words, but have you switched out any light bulbs in your home? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. To LED light bulbs? Yeah. So it's it's brighter, right, for reading, but it's softer. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it yes, it's brighter so that you can read it and it's legible, but it's softer on your eyes. So it's not a glaring light, it's a soft white so that... Illuminating. It's illuminating. What LED light? So what fluorescents do? Like in this room, and I don't know if any of you are. Kind of crazy. Is anyone else wearing contacts other than me? So these lights reflect off the edges of my contacts, and they're driving me crazy right now. Mm -hmm. But so these direct light, like this, right? That's why you can see lines in these lights. Whereas LEDs, they project like this. Mm -hmm. So they spread the light evenly, and that's what gives you a brighter short range, because it's spreading the light like this. It's, it's not going long, right? So essentially, yes, when you're this close, you have a brighter, it's easier to read for legibility, but it's a softer glow versus the harsh environment that you get with fluorescence or neon. Yeah, that's a very good point. Thank you. You're welcome. And in this section here, self-adjust to ambient lighting. So if you have a cloudy day or you have, um, even as night, you know, as the evening air sets, that it softens its illumination itself. And then in the daytime when the sun is directly on it, it readjusts and brightens up so that you can actually see it legibly. But the sign faces up and down Kellogg Ave. That's all. Okay. Yep. Well, we're, not we're not moving no, yet. We're not moving yet. We're not making it here. What I understand from right. you, you live behind the shop. We live behind, but I can't tell right now if if it would shine because on our houses because it's not lit right now. Yeah. So, but the yeah, ones but that are know. shining must be, they must have lights on they, behind the shopping they center. Do. They so do. So find out who to, because that's probably what you're seeing. Well, yes. I tried years ago, Lenore, before you were on this board, trust me, and yeah. Dory knows, coming, you know, with problems with Hannaford, and they really have not been mindful of the convenience of the neighbors. So I just want to be sure we're not going to have additional yeah. lights the, the that are going to be all night long. Right. And the overall height of the sign is only about 22 feet. The building is taller than 22 feet. So you, from your house on the back side, you can't see over the building to the sign. Okay. So th this is well, as long I mean, that's my yes, only sorry. concern, Mr. Chairman. So otherwise, I don't have any problems with what they're doing. You know. I'm, but. A, little, I'm a little curious. I'm getting off. The application a little bit, but the lighting that's um, you know, well, yeah, the, the lighting yeah. that is it spotlights in the back mm -hmm. of the building that are mm -hmm. shoot out towards mm -hmm. your. I have to keep my, I have to keep, and my neighbors too. We were just talking yesterday. I have to keep our shades drawn all night long. So, like in the summertime, if you wanted to open them to get fresh air and stuff, you can't if between the lights and the garbage dumpsters and the deliveries, and because they've expanded the back of that shopping center or the Hannaford closer to us from when we first bought our property. Yeah, there's so, a simple solution to that. Now, I'm not sure south, why we don't do right? No, no. The simple <laughs> solution is motion detection lighting. And basically, if there's a truck coming in and it's going to be dumping behind there, whatever, delivering stock, getting garbage, it triggers on a motion detected light and we should talk to the owner. I know we're getting off to the subject, but it's but done it all over because as soon as that truck moves away, it goes back to darkness. Right, and it's, you know. it's the noise too. Yeah. So I did talk, and I was in front of the board, and I was I did a lot of the legal work yeah. on it. Sure. And we got a sign posted back there about. Well, there's been some vandalism deliveries. back there too, but it, that also motion detection will catch that. Well, we had a, yeah. there's a sign posted back there, no deliveries yeah. during certain times of night, and they don't they just ignore it. So I just gave up. They wore me down, and I gave up fighting on that one. I just want to be sure we're not adding oh, more. No and yeah. if, you know, I'm sure it's not going to be any taller, then we should be okay. But okay. just wanted the okay. board to know my concerns. Appreciate the comments. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any 
What else? I guess not. Um, I, uh, so basically, I was going to say, if she made all these, and I'm not sure the numbers, okay, but there's 14 panels there from what everybody was telling me. Yeah, there's 14. So if you cut two inches off of each of the panels, you don't need to. Yeah, I do have a rendering here. Well, I think she said that the panels are made already or no? No. Oh, okay. So we, we don't build anything okay. until it's we got Well, what I'm saying, if you, if you made them panels, each of them, 14 of them. If we drop them down to 12 inches, I think I can I can push it up. And, and then what was in the paper will be make it legal? Yes, I have that rendering here. That's all right, John. No, it, was, still... it would only be asking for 12, but what I thought was Imagine the existing square footage, not realizing that it was in this count. We are, but we still need to grant the 20 additional feet or 20 to 20. What I'm saying is. Yeah. That's right. right. That's right. Because that's what. Correct. Is, it, is this accurate? What was represented to the public? That's why I said take some stuff off. I say take the wishes off. I guess it's not that sure. Just calculating the John, sometimes you're a little bit sick. You said you guessed that. What was the word you used? Take the of everyone's to do it. They don't generate any electricity. No. I still feel that we so need to report that we I can go around this town and show you probably six to eight of these panels that are up there illegally right now. John Cena is going to issue them back to school and get his head screwed back in school. But no, they're in the Northeast, it's snow. They calculate the cities and then from the 12 month period, they said the amount of sunlight that is generated in this particular area, which is not very good. This area is not conducive for a lot of the last one. He was never going to and uh, Jerry called my last uh, place. Uh, right back, uh, what's his name? Uh, the uh, accountant there. I don't care. Back there. Oh, you got to and we get one that we replace again. I hope they didn't charge it again. They didn't charge us the second time, but then the third time we wanted to, and so we switched to some other kids. And we still have one we're going to replace. You know what? I have a tree that I put in the back where the fences, my fencing, my neighbor's fence comes together, so we can go and put a tree in the back. I went to a landscape and died. They replaced it. The second one died before they, they wanted to charge me again, so I went to the road. In 1990, got one. Same kind of tree. It's growing like crazy. So much for the landscape. It's really easy. Second house in for Rego, I think. Oh, no, towards me. Um, he had little kids. They were in the They thought they were in the house. And they don't even pay attention to the signs anymore. No, they don't. They don't. With the camera, Okay. Wait, we can meet you in the show. Okay, I'm kidding. I have a rendering that meets. What was sent out in the paper and meet your 148 square feet. So you don't have to put out another notice. Okay. And what, what does that include? I'm going to agree to that. Okay. And Byron, we're going to go with your suggestion. Well, of 
Trump gets off. Okay. So, ready? Here's the recap. <laughs> what was your suggestion? <laughs> We're going to find out. So, we're going to find out. The existing sign has two components. You have the Hannaford panel at the top, which equates to 90 square feet, and then you have the ten, what we call the tenant cabinet, which equates to the 58.5 square feet. So the new, the new sign has the Hannaford cabinet, same size, then it has the digital, and then it has the tenant cabinet. This cabinet here is 90 square feet, 90 square feet. 58, 58. When you say here, what do you mean? Oh, I'm sorry. The, the, uh, the old lowers, sign the here, yep, is 90. Here is 90. And the top part is? The top part is 58.5. The top part is 58.5. Okay, gotcha. So it is like for like, we're still within what was posted at 21 square feet variance based on the pre-existing non-conforming use. So we're all within the non-conforming. So we're just repeating what, extending the non-conforming, is that? The 21 right. feet. The 21 feet, yeah. Okay. And then a Byron's suggestion is, in the future, when the additional tenants are signed, we'll come back before you and ask for additional space. And they'll go on the bottom anyway. Yeah, and they'll go down here at the bottom, exactly. That's if you're granted. <laughs> if I'm granted. That's and correct. I will say, pretty oh. please. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, that makes sense. We want to go through this. So I have, and we can put on here the times that you would like the sign turned off. Do we have any thoughts about what that? What time would you go off this sign? Uh, you'd have to change it. What time does it open till? That, I, I honestly... Hannaford stays open till midnight most nights. Midnight? They're not open 24 hours. So you hours. need to leave it a little after for the employees, right? I don't well, think I so. Got, no, they got a parking lot lights. Yeah, yeah. as I said, typically, yeah. from my experience midnight? with other shopping centers, Please. we usually go with... The earliest opening to the latest opening, which is your typical grocery store, they usually have the, the longest hours. Um, do you want me to Google what Hanford's hours are, or do you want to just write on here that it needs to follow Hanford's hours? Which I say, I'm going to keep it at midnight. Time. Unless we want, not, I'd rather keep it. Midnight? Yeah, there's very few okay. people in so there. So off at midnight and on at? Yeah, the on, I don't care. Okay. Dust, probably. I mean, dust to dawn. dawn. Well, as I say, Dawn's hard because if Hanford opens at 5 and the sign's not coming up, yeah, the morning so Dawn at 8. Well, in the summer or in the winter, right. you know, it doesn't no, get light until no, 7 30, yeah. so it's got to be on. So you want to say off 5? I'm not going to give you a, a front end. Okay, so just off at midnight and then on at business opening. It's recorded. Okay. That makes sense. It's going to be part yeah. of the motion. Yeah, okay, we will, but we got to go through the criteria and we got to. Okay. And we may have some more questions from anybody in the audience. Even if they get a lawyer, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you need a game text. You can be like, Gail, come on down. She's the only one left for me. Yeah. I didn't get any calls on this. At least we're listening, Gail. You are. You are. I'm impressed. Yeah, no calls on it. I'll make people up to her. I hope they help you look behind. Huh? Yeah, we're going to do that now. That I know. I, and I, again, like I said, I, I don't represent Hannaford. I don't work for Hannaford, so I have no weight with Hannaford whatsoever. I'll I don't like these. Yeah, there's got to be an audit artist. The so, town board doesn't yeah. even, they put a sign up. The town, he had a sign. Oh, told them to put a sign up. Yeah. I don't have any more questions. Sir. No, I, I was all set. I was all set with two and a half. All right. I'm sorry. Before we go through the before we go through the criteria, just for the record, that we have we have a uh, response from the New York State DOT. Uh, they do not have an issue with the action of the code, <laughs> and we have a response from the United County Department of Planning. No recommendation. How about that? <laughs> Your notes are not here, Yes, I, I'm going to keep that one. Oh, okay. But I was just circulating to make sure. So now, do we want to take a look at the criteria? Sure. The yeah. word is actually open only until the time period. Yeah, I think that's even right, too. And you're still there, too? So do you want to do their hours? No wonder they're throwing them out. No, they changed it. They used to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, you're right. Yeah, it's just they changed it. Change it but it's I would do their hours. Yeah. Do you want to do it based on Hannaford's business hours? Yeah. Are they the last the retail establishment? I would assume. I would imagine so. I don't think that there's a. Sure. Uh, the people go there. I mean, if they put in a restaurant, if there's a restaurant oh, there, the there, 
Yeah, so the, is there. it might be nice yeah, for any restaurant, restaurant patient. Mm -hmm. They would probably want their yeah. The lighting yeah, is yeah, a little bit. Yeah, but the lights in a parking lot, too. Yeah, yeah but side. if you're a patron, oh, you kind of want to, I mean, you're not going to want to go into a parking lot. The parking lot's light. light. It's, yeah, it is well lit so. all night long. Lit up as a light. Okay. 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 We've got a sign over there. there. Front. i got one more question. You gave us this here. See, this is the existing sign. Is any of the new sign going lower than this? Not with that drawn. That's what I want to make sure. So we're not going. We're not extending it down, right? Wait, hold on. Yes, it is. It's coming down slightly. 21 feet. Wait, wait, no. Because the 21 feet is within the sign because it's Oh, no, you know what? You're right. You're right. Not on this render. No. Not on this render. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah okay. Not on this render. Are you sure? Yes. One more time. Not on this one. Okay, Jerry, what was, what was that? Who is the there? question was from the old sign that we have, as we can see here that's illustrated, the additional signs are not going to go any lower than the existing sign. Because oh, right. if this is 148.5, this has got to be 188.5. Yeah, actually, yeah, right. actually yeah. no, I'm sorry, I'm going to retract that. Uh -oh. The existing sign, the tenant cabinet, measures 10 foot this way, 9 foot this way. The new one goes 9 foot this way, 10 foot this way. So it's Same 1 foot way. lower. Same square footage. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm if we can just put it off at business closing on at business opening, that way if they do adjust their hours, it's, you know, it's, a, it's welcoming to the patrons. I mean, we did establish not, we could say not to exceed 12 o'clock. Yeah, and not to exceed 12 o'clock. Not to exceed. Well, it depends on the person who's going to make the motion. motion. Well, I'm ready to discuss it first, and then whoever makes it. No, or yes, I, or, or no is my answer on criteria. Okay. For step one ready? on criteria that we're reading. Well, there's a benefit. Now we're going to go through the criteria, so we're closed. We're closed. Whether the benefit can be achieved by the means feasible to the applicant? No. 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 Are we in agreement? Yes. Undesirable change in neighborhood character of the nearby property? No. no. Whether the request is substantial? No. no. Whether the request will have adverse physical and environmental no. effects? No. And whether it lets difficulty self created mm -hmm. no. I don't think in this case. No. So with that said, does somebody want to make a motion? You wrote it all down. Well, I, didn't, I wrote down a piece, but yes, I'd like to make a motion to approve the application with uh, the same not to be lit after midnight or not, or not to be to be only lit during wait, normal. Wait, 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 okay, I'm sorry. Only lit. During normal business operating hours, or in any event, not after midnight. Second. Aye. Second by John. Aye. 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 <laughs> I get to deal with the customers and the all day. You guys <laughs> want to be the town hall. You should do the time. I appreciate it. You're not doing 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 it. You're